This tiny emulation machine is simply a Raspberry Pi Zero inside a custom case. The enclosure was designed to fit around the Raspberry Pi Zero and themed as a PlayStation 1, which is the smaller revision of the first PlayStation. Both these cases were 3D printed and then refined by hand. However, one was done on a cheap 3D printer while the other was done on a very high quality one. Not many people have access to a high quality printer, but by sanding and detailing the case by hand, you can achieve a correct finish in a reasonable amount of time. In this video, we'll see a few techniques to polish up a 3D printed object and make it look more like a commercial product. One of these cases was 3D printed with a very high quality printer by Chris from DowningsBasement.com. You can already see that one case looks much better than the other, but it will be interesting to see what we can get out of a cheap 3D printer with some detailing work afterwards. The 3D model was designed with a CAD software, making sure it fits the Raspberry Pi Zero. The challenge was to make all the ports accessible while not butchering the original design and also to find a way to properly close the case with screws. The proportions of the PlayStation 1 were mostly kept true, but its features were greatly exaggerated as it was scaled down. It's almost like a caricature of the PS1 case, in the hope to capture its aesthetics even at this size. Let's start with 3D printing the first revision of the case on a cheap printer. The model is printed with PLA, most 3D printers are able to print with ABS, which would have been preferable here. However, this entry-level printer is only able to print PLA, so we'll have to make do with it. PLA is a more brittle material, and it melts at a lower temperature. This means that when you take a Dremel to it, it melts quicker than ABS, and it seems to break faster. Still, you'll see that it works just fine. This case will be a simple two-part case. The rounded shape of the case will allow us to print it without supports. It's not the ideal way to print it, and it will create defects. However, it will be a big time save over having to deburr the supports. The print was set on the highest quality possible, with a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, which should be thin enough. It's printed on 100% density, because it will be sanded later on. When printing without supports, it's a good idea to apply a bit of glue to the tape on the print bed. It ensures the print won't fall off in early stages of the process. Since this cheap printer does not have a heated print bed, it's even more imperative to use glue. Here is the result. The general shape is here and the details are present. However, there are a lot of defects. Most of the details of the buttons and the lid are hidden by those defects you can see that some parts were way too detailed for this printer. This was expected and will require us to detail it by hand later. With the help of a Dremel and an X-Acto knife, most of the visible defects are removed. The case cannot close by itself because defects get in the way of the screw posts. We'll remove them with a drill bit. The buttons are reshaped a bit and are sanded to eliminate the visible layers. After a first coat of paint, we will see the defects more clearly. But before that, it's a good idea to start sanding the outer surface of the case. Since this is a 3D print, there will be cracks and crevices corresponding to the movement of the nozzle. The case will require a lot of sanding to eliminate those. After a little bit of sanding and water sanding, the first coat of spray paint is applied. You can clearly see the many problems of this print. Some bits are missing, there are randomly placed holes, and you can clearly see the lines of the print. This case is nowhere near ready. It doesn't look like an emulation machine, or even a proper plastic case. But this is nothing we can't fix with careful sanding. Bondo, or body filler, is a great way to fill the little cracks and holes. It is applied in thin layers, and it dries very fast we'll apply it on the outer surface of the print. And also, using a sharp tool, we can stuff some Bondo in the little missing parts. This will help us rebuild the parts that were botched during the print, like the lip of the disk drive cover. After applying the putty, it needs to be thoroughly sanded, almost until it completely disappears. 
That way, only the amount needed to fill the cracks remains. The little details can be done with a sharp knife. Some areas are difficult to sand, even with a nail file. In this case, a drill bit was used. Gently rub it against the surface, making sure you don't cut through. After a lot of sanding, the case is prepared for another coat of paint. Already, after this coat of paint, the case looks better. Most of the defects are gone. The little lip is rebuilt, but you can still see some cracks where the light shines. Thus, much more sanding is needed. The little details on the bottom half are supposed to represent the controller ports. They were engraved with a knife. It's not really the desired result, but considering how small this is and how difficult PLA is to engrave, we won't go further with it. With another pass of sanding and painting, the case should be done. With this low quality print, the screw posts and the closing mechanism cannot function without a bit of work. The screw posts are sanded so that they are rounded as intended, and the holes in them are drilled. In order to thread the hole, you just need to insert a screw. Since PLA is pretty malleable, it should fit nicely, provided you drill the hole the right size. During the print, and also because of the paint, the case might have been warped a little. In order to adjust it, the case is closed with the intended screws and then sanded. Using a nail file allows us to true up the walls and make sure they properly meet. This gives the case a more professional finish. We also need to make sure that the Raspberry Pi Zero properly fits in the case and that the screws can properly fasten it. The same treatment than before is given to the screw posts. They are sanded and drilled and then a screw is inserted with force. The screws used were old screws retrieved on dead electronics. They are a little bit too long to fit in the case's screw post. Thus, we need to shorten them. They are cut with a Dremel, but it would be just as easy with a handsaw. After cutting them, just make sure you shape the tip of the thread correctly. Otherwise, it would be difficult to screw them in. Sand the tip so that there are no metal bits in the way. The Raspberry Pi Zero fits just fine, and there's enough clearance to close the case. Which means that, with a little more sanding, the case can be painted for the last time. The paint is applied as evenly as possible. This final coat can be a little thicker than the previous ones, so that the surface is smooth. After painting, there seems to be some small bubbles in the paint. Thankfully, they disappeared as the paint dried. Before finishing up on the case with some decals, let's have a look at another way to make it with a high-quality 3D printer. To test out the power and detail of his SLA printer, an esteemed modder, Downing, or Chris from Downingsbasement.com, decided to print this 3D model on his high-quality printer. He was nice enough to send in the result, giving us an opportunity to compare a cheap print with the very best of 3D printing. It's important to note that the 3D model was slightly revised before this print. Since there's a greater level of detail in the print, the lid cutout was made a bit smaller, amongst other things. SLA printers are very different from classic 3D printers. In this process, a liquid resin is locally solidified by short bursts of UV light. Since the focus point of the light can be very concise, the prints made using this method usually have a high level of detail. Because of this, the models need to be at an angle. Some scaffolding or supports are necessary. Thus, the little amount of work remaining for this case will also account for deburring those supports. After an object is printed in SLA printing, it has to be cured for a few hours with UV light. This ensures that the print is solid and easier to work with. You can already see that this print is an exact replica of the 3D model. Even the controller ports came out great when they weren't even visible on the previous print. The level of detail is amazing. You can even detect the very faint chamfer around the lid, which was put there without any hope of it working out. Already, it looks like almost no work is needed to finish up this case. A little bit of sanding and painting should suffice. Sanding the surface slightly helps us erase the very faint markings of the layers, 
but this time, no need to rebuild the details. Sanding will also allow the primer and paint to bond durably to the plastic. By using a nail file and a sharp knife, the residue from the scaffolding is easily removed. It seems that with this printing process, the case wasn't warped at all. There's no need to adjust the angle of the walls. To make sure everything works before painting, let's do a test fit. The screw holes on the top of the case seem to have been clogged. Interestingly enough, it seems that a small amount of liquid resin got stuck in the screw posts. However, this didn't turn out to be a problem, since the screw posts were correctly formed. Drilling those screw holes will immediately solve the problem. The screws are easily inserted, and it feels like it's a tight fit. Much like before, they have to be shortened with a saw. Same thing for the small screws. A little drilling fixes the problem, and they fit perfectly. Even though these screws are tiny, they seem to be strong enough. Their strength is very dependent on the size of the hole you drill. As you can see, this test fit is an instant success. The Raspberry Pi Zero fits nicely, and the case closes directly. No need to modify the case at all. With this method, we get exactly what we expected from the 3D design. Just before painting, the case is also water sanded to make the surface as smooth as possible. In this process, the object is sanded with high grit, water resistant sandpaper while being dunked in water. The water allows for a much smoother sanding. It's a good idea to do this as a very last step. And after that, a coat of plastic primer is sprayed on the case, followed by a first coat of paint. The first coat needs to be pretty thin. But already, the case looks great. The paint is uneven and didn't get everywhere, but still, it looks promising. A few more coats and the case should be done. Hopefully, only two to three more coats of paint are needed. If there were any more, the small details in the case would be masked by the excess of paint. Thus, before the following coats of paint, the case is water sanded again. Much like before, the last coat needs to be a wet coat, thicker and evenly spread. It looks like this final coat of paint should be enough. The case looks smooth and detailed as it is. It seems the paint didn't manage to go all the way through the disc seam, but actually it looks good like this and accentuates the detail of the lid. Before we compare the two cases, let's add some details. By using water slide decals, we are able to introduce logos and symbols on the case that we wouldn't have been able to paint otherwise. These symbols were designed on the computer and scaled to the size of the case. Much like the case itself, they are an exaggeration of the symbols found on the full-size PlayStation 1. They were made a bit bigger than expected. These designs were simply printed on a water slide decal paper with a classic inkjet printer. These sheets were bought cheap online. This was a disaster at first. If you're using an inkjet printer, the ink will just dissolve whenever water gets in contact with it. However, spray painting a clear coat on the printed surface seemed to fix the issue. The outer surface of the decal becomes waterproof, and it can be manipulated. The printed paper is left in water for a bit, and then the designs are transferred onto the case. After a few hours to dry, the cases are complete. The decals really help in giving the case a more serious look. This level of detail could never have been achieved with modeling paint. And it turns out this method is cheaper. To help the Raspberry Pi Zero deal with PlayStation emulation, we'd better give it a heatsink. These can be retrieved on dead electronics. For instance, this computer was found lying on the street. The space the heatsink can occupy was determined using the 3D model of the case. From that, a mock-up of the heatsink was extracted. It was then quickly printed with PLA on low-resolution settings. The chipset cooler is close to the right size. We'll just have to modify it slightly. This mock-up will help visualize what needs to be trimmed off of the actual heatsink. Due to a Dremel failure, most of this had to be cut by hand, thus showing that you don't necessarily need tools for these mods. 
though the Dremel was sorely missed for this step. A handsaw can easily cut through aluminum. Then the shape was refined with very high grit sandpaper and patience. Some matter needs to be trimmed off of the top of this heatsink so that it fits the case. This is also achieved through sanding, preferably on a flat surface. Some leftover thermal paste is used, and then the heatsink is set on the Pi Zero using dabs of epoxy resin. This is not the best way to do this. However, due to the size of this machine, no other practical solution was found. The epoxy will not melt, even if the heatsink gets very hot. The heatsink could still easily be removed with a knife by cutting the little dabs of epoxy. With this heatsink in place, let's close both of the cases. We can now compare the results of the two cases. And there really is no contest. The SLA printed case looks smoother and more detailed. It almost looks like a commercial product. The controller port area is incomparable to its PLA counterpart. The controller ports were handmade with a knife and look uneven. And you have to consider that almost twice as much work went into this case. Thus, a clear win for the SLA printer. But, in a way, it's reassuring to think that with just a little more work, we were able to get a comparable result with a cheap 3D printer. Considering how the PLA case looked straight out of the printer, it's clearly improved with a little elbow grease. And while SLA printing gives the best result all around, a little sanding and a cheap 3D printer gave similar results. About 20 years after the PS1's release, here is a PS1 Mini at only 1 20th of its volume. With enough tweaking of the settings, PlayStation 1 emulation on the Raspberry Pi Zero is possible, even though it's definitely not the best platform for this. At the PlayStation's native resolution, we get fluid playback for even the most demanding games. But don't expect this to surpass the actual PS1 by any means, or even approach its stability. Still, it's a blast to have a decorative object such as this be able to actually play the games. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. Also, please visit DowningsBasement.com and Downing's YouTube channel. He is a very skilled and fast modder that you can commission for Nintendo 64 portables and more. If you want frequent updates on these projects, then follow the Rated E Mods Facebook page or Twitter profile.